Hello everybody. I have a fun project that I want to work on today with you. Uh, I am going to be painting a skull. This is actually a lesson that I'm going to be referring back to with our academy students at the Renaissance Academy of Fine Arts quite a bit. Painting a skull is a very useful discipline and it's really advantageous for you to um, understand that. As I'm going along, um, you're welcome to paint with, or if you want to go ahead and pick one of these up. I got mine on Amazon. I know you can find them other places. I paid $45 for mine, and it is a resin of a real skull. So um, this one is mine, and the mandible, of course, is detachable, as you saw. And this is a female skull, too. And um, anyway, so I, I just, I'm going to be referring to the different features and the different aspects of this. And I have set my skull up on my still life stand down below here um, in a sort of an angle that I might commonly paint a regular portrait in with the same dramatic lighting, strong shadow on this side. And so I'm going to paint that. All right, you guys. Oh, and if you're interested, I'll put a link down below that uh, where you can find more um, skulls on Amazon. And also I'm going to put a link to the Renaissance Academy of Fine Arts so that you can take a look at what we're doing with that. All right, let's get going. Okay, so for materials today, I'm just painting on a 12 by 16 linen canvas, and I have my regular colors out, but I'm not going to be using all of them. Today, I'm just really going to be using the um, cat, excuse me, the titanium white. I may use a touch of the cadmium yellow, but not much. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue. I don't think I'm going to touch the fatal green and the lizard and crimson. And you really won't have a need to see what I'm actually mixing, so I'm going to leave my palette down below here resting on the edge of my easel right, right down here. I have my little bucket of Gamsol, odorless mineral spirits, and then um, I put my linseed oil in an agave bottle because I like the lid is just like this and I can squeeze it right into my little cups here on my palette. So that's all I'm going to use is just a little bit of linseed oil really just to thin the paint. I don't need much more than just a few drops. What I'm going to do is to start out by toning this canvas. So I have my paper towels and just going to jump in with a larger brush just to get some color on the canvas. A little bit of thinner here. Some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. A bigger brush for this. Get the job. Now, because I don't like those streaky, swirly looks, I take a cleaner, drier spot of my paper towel and I give it a little bit of texture, but I'm not done. Because I, I know that I'm going to have parts of this canvas that are still showing through, so if I want some of that peeking through, I want it to look interesting and not have those paper towel streaks. Now I'm going to take and just kind of rough up the surface a little bit like this. And it sort of gives it a textural quality that looks almost like suede or leather. I really like that. And I, I always do this step too because um, it sort of takes that top layer of the odorless mineral spirits and pigment off. So when I'm toning, I go a little bit darker than I need because I know I'm going to be taking it down. If you don't add enough thinner to your initial layer, then it's going to be too dark and you won't be able to wipe it off unless you really rub hard. Okay, so that has an interesting texture to me and I believe I'm ready to get started. So I'm going to wipe down the surface of my palette a little bit just to kind of clean my area. Get going that way. All right, so getting a fresh paper towel. Now, if you have a particular portrait that you are working on, when you set up your skull, you may want to arrange your skull in the position of the actual portrait that you are working on. Um, so just find if you have to set it on some books or you know lift it up or however you have to do it so that you can have that foundational study of what the skull is doing under the particular portrait you're working on. 
So I'm going to get my skull back to where. Okay, so I'm just going to take a mixture of some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna just to get a dark. This will be my darkest value. Just to kind of figure out the general placement where I want this on the canvas. Nothing really definitive yet. It's just sort of a, it's going to sit in this area kind of. So I want the light, I'm thinking about how I want the light to travel in this painting. I'm always thinking about sort of that compositional. Like that. Okay, so I'm starting with the eye socket here. Working with my darkest areas first and then um, building out from there. So I'm thinking about how the bones are turning in this area. I'm wiping my brush off to get this transition here where the eyebrow bone is. And then the socket turns and goes down inside. I'm always laying the foundation first of getting the eyes in the right location. I'm looking at the overall angle. I know there's not much for eyes there, but the eye socket is critical to getting a likeness in someone. So I always start with the eyes. And the bridge of this nose is a very sharp angle as it comes and cuts into that eye socket. And then this one. And I am using a little bit more ultramarine blue than sienna in this. More blue will give it a blacker tone. The top part of the eye socket is a sharp, crisp edge. And then as it turns, and we have the zygomatic bone right here, the cheekbone, it's a softer transition. So this whole passage inside the socket is fairly dark. There's some subtle variations within that, and I can get into that later. I'm looking at these little angles and so forth inside this whole area. Always paying attention to where the light is hitting it and how that is affecting the shadows as they move. Looking at the movement of light, the movement of the object going back into space. There's always movement and to be mentally cognizant of that is really the key to painting. So the ridge of the eye socket is here, but the light coming from above is hitting this. So if I was painting this person's portrait, there'd be a strong light on the ridge of their eye socket here. All right, so the ridge of the zygomatic bone comes here, squinting down at my skull. Again, just taking the passages where it's the darkest dark. Same thing with on this side. Now this, these over here are not going to be quite as dark as what's inside the eye socket. So I'm adjusting the value on my palette by just taking some of the pigment and not a, a large scoop of the pigment. I'm 
And I think what I'm gonna do is make this background here a little bit darker and then utilize the medium tone of the canvas to help sculpt out more of that bone structure. So you can see how just by taking that background, carving that into that area there by the eye socket, now I have that bone working for me. And then the zygomatic comes down, using that background. This is almost lost to the background, this area here. So let's let that just sort of be one. The same thing with up here. This whole passage along the side of the skull is very dark in shadow, but it's very close to the background back here. Keeping all of these little subtleties and nuances in this shadowed passage on this side of the skull quiet and unified is the first step. So I don't want to make all these different um, variations that I'm seeing back here. Just keeping it very muted is key. I can always come back in later and add more if I want. All right, let's get the this triangular passage in here. Not worried about all the little bones inside this nasal cavity at this moment. Just the value. I'm squinting down at it to get that. Let's keep this all unified. It's always all about what you can do to unify rather than divide. And what can you get away with leaving out? What do you not have to put in to still make it work? The way this bone comes down into the mandible down here. By pressing a little bit harder, I can get more of that pigment off of my brush. By pressing lighter, I can make it a little softer. Thinking about the way the muzzle here just wraps around in this area. I'm letting this just fade into the background over here. 
Soft edges give a feeling of roundness. Sharp edges like the sinus um, cavity here will give you a sharp edge, a crisp edge. Cleaning my brush off, I'll show you how that can really just separate itself from the surface of the canvas, taking a little bit of yellow ochre and white This whole side of the nose here has a strong light hitting it. Get a little bit more yellow in there because I don't want this to be my lightest light. I'm gonna just pop in a few more of these lighter tones just to help me see where I'm going. Squinting down at this, I really just wanna pull out the essential ones right now. I can, Then I wanna gauge and I'll come back and see what needs to be a little bit lighter, a little stronger whatever. I was thinking about the planes of the bones. The front of this forehead here is in a little bit darker plane, so I'm going to mix a little bit of that. It's almost the middle tone color that we have going here. I'm going to add a little touch of linseed oil just to help thin it just a little because I don't want it very thick. I'm adding a little more blue to this too. And this is the one plane of the forehead and it comes up. Like this and meets over here, this side plane. The, the forehead comes up and then there's a plane here where it breaks and turns and goes back. So I'm thinking about the movement here as it turns and starts to fade back into the background this way. And just letting that fade back that way. Just move that back that way. A little bit more of a darker accent here. And the turn that comes around this way. All right. So we'll leave this area for now. I'll pop in a few more of these highlights. Right here where the, the bridge of the nose meets inside the eye socket, there's a little bit of a turn right here. So let's grab a little more yellow ochre and some of that white. with a very soft pressure with the brush it can just affect a very subtle shift. At the way that this bone has a stronger accent up here. And a, a sharp shadow edge here. And then the defining bridge of the nose comes down
And where it gets wider down here, the edge softens. Right? And then right along this edge, we have a very sharp, crisply defined um, break in the bone. And then this plane here, where it changes, it's not getting the strong direct light, but it's starting to get a little bit more off light right here. And it comes up and around right here. So I'm going to wipe my brush off and really kind of soften this edge right here. And then as it comes around right inside here, there's a little bit stronger of a light inside this eye socket. Now, coming back into here, I'm going to jump back into some of my darks, taking a little bit of linseed oil with the ultramarine blue and sienna, thinning this down. I want to sculpt out this passage under here where the mandible is. And I am looking at these ang this angle here where the teeth come out of the skull, and then the lower jaw curves and comes around this way under the teeth. So here we have a slight value defining that lower chin, the chin down here. There's some sharper accents under it back in here. So before I start drawing the lower line of the mandible, I want to come up here and get the pieces of negative space. And then this whole passage of shadow under the cheekbone right here. The interesting thing about painting a skull is I, even though this is a, um, a resin, they still had to make it from someone. And I always wonder about who this person was. When were they born? What were their hopes and dreams? They laughed, they cried. I think that's interesting. All right, so, and then we have under the skull back here, Zygomatic comes back like this. And then under the mandible, there's a little pocket where the shadows cast this way. All right, so let me just double check that the sinus cavity comes down, lighter tone now, and start mapping out this passage of light as it flows down the skull here. So my palette, 
I'm working the colors like this. So I have my lightest light over here, then it gradually gets darker, darker, darker over this way. So then I just dip into the passage that I need here. Where the canine tooth comes down, that's actually my one that's missing, <laughs> there's a lighter passage here on each side that it's where the muzzle turns and, and goes back. And that is usually indicated with the canine tooth. And then these, as they go back, I can let this value down here just sort of recede back into this passage. And this is a little bit darker value. It is sculpting out temple. Maybe some cad yellow, just to mark out where that table is here, where it's sitting. Giving that a sense of surface down here helps to really anchor it to the table surface there. Just kind of let it go back into shadow this way a little bit more. This way too.
still feeling like I want this mandible tucked under here a little bit more. Now to make your shadows appear transparent, and like they really are part of the background, you want to always make sure that they have a soft edge. So this one, I really do want the shadow to go back this way. It's important to have it there because we've got the strong lighting and I think I might even just let it go all the way back. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just sort of carve out the back of the skull by using the background. And skulls really have a fascinating shape with all these subtle angles and points and so forth. So this kind of... I'm going to let this kind of just go back here, just fade back this way. Looking at the structure of the temple here, it comes in quite significantly right here, and then it bulges out in this area here to accommodate the brain. And then all of this down here just kind of fades into that darker tone. Subtle highlights and things, but we'll just let that live back there in quietness. Again, just using the background to sculpt out a suggested form that that sort of suggests there. Sort of painting it by not painting it.
find it very meditative and relaxing to work out these problems and situations in the painting and see where they go. Just sort of play with some of these realities here. This goes this way, this goes this way. What happens if I do this? Things like that. those little subtleties in there. Letting the brush stroke show the form of this mandible goes back. It's a very smooth bone here for the jaw. Very soft edge. Let's just connect with the surface of the table a little bit. And a little bit on this ridge of this bone here as it turns. strength of the brow bone right here. And then we've got a highlight right there where that turns. Let's just make that a little bit more predominant. I'll give one of these teeth a little highlight there too. And while I'm at it, let me get the broad nose bone a little. Right there where it turns. Okay, so back to the contours of the skull. Many times in painting portraits, it's a common occurrence to not get in enough of the cranium. So you just always double check that you've allowed for enough um, skull space up in here. I'm looking at the angles of this we just want that to be a softer passage back in there looking at these different segments of the skull as they come down. Don't know if I mentioned yet, but like I mentioned before, that this is a female skull. I named her Jean. <laughs> Not because of Jane Doe or anything like that, but because um, I noticed some similarities of her skull and my skull. So my middle name is Jane and I couldn't call her Jessie. That would be weird. So <laughs> now you know, <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, her chin, her eye sockets. It's kind of weird. But anyway, if you order a skull, you'll have to name yours something interesting. And um, again, here, I'm just using the background 
uh, once again to help define the shape of the skull. It's important if you're going to sit or stand, whatever you're doing, that you are always in the same angle that you were viewing it in. Sometimes you can view it this way or this way and, and everything changes. So make sure that when you're working from life that you are always looking at your object or model or whatever from the same perspective. Maybe you've got a little bit of attention up there. And then this over here is very soft where the shadow comes up on the side of the skull here and meets this roundness. We've got this movement coming forward. I'm going to just let that go back into shadow right, right back there. and pull out. So I'm going to get a little bit more of this background situation back here behind the skull where there's a little more light hitting it behind here. That'll help pull out that contour. Very much like painting a portrait. See if I can grab that color a little bit down here too. Okay. 
Now I'm going to take a little bit smaller brush and just come back through here and pull out some values that are a little bit off, maybe fiddle around with the teeth a little bit more, things like that. And that about wraps that up. That's about as far as I want to take this study. And uh, Okay, the thing is, is you can pick these things apart and just enjoy playing with it over and over again. I'm going to have to stop there.